I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about SVG and icon fonts, typography, and CSS sliders. Let's check it out. First up is Brackets. This is a brand new IDE from Adobe, and it's designed for editing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But the cool thing about it is that it's also built in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Sounds like it's built in Inception. That's right. It's just Brackets all the way down. So you can head over to the Brackets webpage and which we have in the show notes. Brackets.io, um, if on you can't see them right now. YouTube and iTunes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's at brackets.io, and you can read all about the project there. It is open source, so you can actually see the source of the editor and uh, see how it all works. Uh, it's probably pretty interesting. I haven't looked at it myself. But uh, you can download this and install Brackets. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to Brackets right now. Here's what the interface looks like, full screen. And uh, you have your typical file folder drawer over here on the left side. So I'm looking at an HTML web page here. There's also some CSS. And if you hover over, uh, say, these gradients in CSS, you can actually see what that gradient is going to look like. You can also do the same for colors. So I can hover over this light gray color here, or this dark gray color. And uh, it even does RGBA with uh, transparency. So that's, that's pretty neat. Um, up here in the upper right, you can launch the web page. So if I flip back to the browser and tab over here, here's actually the web page that I had loaded up in brackets. So if I were to flip over to brackets here, it says, getting started with brackets in this H1, I'll go ahead and type in, uh, this is a web page. And let's see if I hit save and then flip over to the page I was editing, it, automatic, it automatically live updates the page. So wow. that's pretty amazing. Um, Brackets is uh, still a brand new project. I mean, there's a lot of stuff uh, that's probably still getting baked in here. I think that's the metaphor that they used on the Brackets website. But uh, it's definitely a pretty cool project and worth trying out for you know, maybe your next web project. I'm looking forward to trying out version 2, curly braces, and version 3, parentheses. Looking forward to it. Next up, over on the Hull blog, there is an article on reconciling SVG and icon fonts. Now, this is a really awesome article. It walks through setting up a different Ruby server to watch a certain folder while you're developing an icon font. And it will take any SVG in this folder. And as soon as you save it, live update in your browser. Wow, that's yeah. pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So the web page walks through. Um, this was written on April 14th. Wonderful, wonderful blog post. So it goes through. This person chooses to edit SVGs in a program called Sketch. Now, what you have to do, you have to install a few different things to get this working. You have to download a Ruby gem called Middleman. After that, you initialize the project and then add in the Live Reload pl plugin. Uh, the Live Reload plugin will automatically reload resources in your browser without you having to refresh the page. So it works similar to how Brackets does that Nick just displayed for us. So after you get all that set up, you point it to your SVG folder, and any item inside of that folder will get its own CSS class and get an icon font generated automatically. So anyway, combine all this together, and you've got a really great workflow for creating icon fonts out of SVGs. That's pretty amazing. It, it is pretty amazing. It's, uh, it's powerful. It would pair well with a stout beer. Hmm. We're doing beers this episode yeah, instead of wines. We did wines last, last episode, episode. So We're taking the Treehouse Show to new places here. Yeah. Great. Next up is this really nifty tool from UI Parade that basically allows you to create buttons, forms, ribbons, and all sorts of stuff. So let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on Button Builder. Ooh. 
And here we have this nice looking button and this little preview pane. And over here on the right side, I can go ahead and adjust some of the settings using these nice sliders here. So I can adjust the padding, the font size, the roundness of the corners, the thickness of the borders, and all sorts of stuff. You can even adjust all of the colors for the different states that the button can be in. And then down here at the bottom, when you're all done making your customizations, you can click Generate HTML and it will just give you the HTML here, which is just a simple anchor element in this case. And if you hit Generate CSS, it will give you the more interesting portion of this, all of the complicated CSS that you would need to generate for this one little button. This would be a good thing to use with maybe, say, some SAS mix-ins to try and compartmentalize a lot of this complexity. But uh, it's certainly handy if you're just making a quick static website and you just need a nice looking button that you want to throw in there. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's back up though and let's look at a different one here. Let's look at say the ribbon builder. And here you can do similar things, adjust the width of the ribbon, the size of the ends of the ribbon, uh, the font size, etc. So pretty amazing stuff. I, I think they've built a, a pretty interesting tool here. It's definitely a very specific use case because, you know, if you're using a CSS framework like, say, Bootstrap, you would probably have a lot of this stuff already built in. But it is useful if you're just doing these one-off simple projects or maybe you want to actually build something that's similar to one of these buttons, but you're not quite sure what the CSS for that might look like. So pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. It's a, it's a light, handy tool. I would pair that with a Pilsner. Next up, over on the HTML5 Rocks Tutorials blog, there is a post on avoiding unnecessary paints. Now, this is by Paul Lewis, and it walks through why you are going to want to avoid repaints in the browser. Repaints can be pretty expensive. Now, a repaint occurs when the browser has to either adjust what's on the screen in the DOM, uh, this could happen if you have interactivity on an element that pushes other elements out of the way, or if you're doing animations. A whole bunch of things can require painting. One big one is scrolling the page. As you're scrolling through the page, the browser needs to know what's going on below and above where you're scrolling, and this can be costly. Now, in this article, Paul goes through and shows you a couple different ways that you can minimize repainting. It's interesting, he sets a target of 16 milliseconds as repaint time, and he avoids that. He, he's showing you how to avoid that as you're going through and developing your application. And believe it or not, having hover um, effects while scrolling can be a huge source of repainting. Wow. So hmm. ultimately, the biggest advice in this article is to use the dev tools a lot while you're developing something, and you can save your users a lot of time and energy and their browsers a lot of repainting if you go through and keep it in mind. There are some trade-offs that you'll have to make, but there is some really great, really great insight here in this article with links to really thorough tutorials on how to prevent this stuff. So check it out. It'll be in the show notes that you can get at youtube.com slash go treehouse or in iTunes, search for The Treehouse Show and leave us a review. iTunes. iTunes. Next up is Type plate, which is a typographic starter kit. I know that because it says it right here on the website. Almost a typographic template. That's right. Basically, it is a, well, a typographic starter kit that allows you to set the scales of all of your fonts or set a typographic scale, as they say here. So here's an example of what a typographic scale might look like. So you have a, a bunch of different headers here or six different levels of headers. Actually, I think there's a few more there. And it gives you all of the SAS that you would need to actually set this scale. So it's a pretty handy tool. I, I would use this in combination with, say, something like uh, a CSS reset. If you are doing some, some lighter coding and you just want to do a, a simple reset, set some simple typography, and then build your CSS on top of that. Uh, but again, this is the type of thing that you might get with a, a more robust CSS framework. So 
if you are using a framework like Bootstrap, for example, and you don't have to, you don't have to build every website that way, you just have to be careful because a lot of the stuff might already be included in it. But uh, still, I think, you know, just like the, uh, the UI parade stuff we were looking at, the, the form builder and the ribbon builder, I think this serves a similar function in that you would use this for lighter coding. So I'd say this also pairs well with a Pilsner. Pilsner, yes. Or, hear me out here, since they smashed together the words type and template to form typeplate, black and tan. Mm. Nice little blend there. Next up, there is a tutorial on JavaScript regular expression enlightenment. This is an absolutely amazing tutorial and write-up on how you would use regular expressions in JavaScript. Especially if you use them on the regular. <laughs> hey, that was good. <laughs> You're welcome for that. <laughs> yeah, that was that was fantastic. Anyway, this is this is an absolutely huge article. It tells you what regular expressions are, uh, when you might want to use them, and when you might not want to use them. Uh, seriously, there's not you, you don't need to fix every problem with a regular expression because, as they say, then you have two problems. Anyway, absolute ton of stuff to go over in this article, and what I really like about it is that you can find examples of everything that they're talking about with these regular expressions and then edit them on JS Fiddle and boom, you know exactly what's going on. So it's great. It shows you exactly what part of the string you're going to get and uh, really, really thorough article. It's a bit too long to go over here on the show, but definitely check that out. We'll have that link for you in the show notes. Next up is a really awesome article over on CSS Tricks. Of course, CSS Tricks is a friend of the show. Uh, Chris Coyer, who runs CSS Tricks, ran, or, or I'm sorry, he, he created this really cool CSS slider. And I've seen a lot of CSS sliders, but this one is just a little bit different and has a nice effect. So let's take a look at it. Here we have this picture of a guy. I guess it's a sunset or something. I think that's a bicycle. I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, there's the weather, 74 degrees. Maybe that's what they're trying to say. It's 74 degrees in this picture. But if I click on one of these little circles down here and go to the next picture. Look at that. Wow. It slides right over. And now there's another picture here and some uh, some more weather information. Do you think they're using Celsius or Fahrenheit? I don't know. I would have to guess Fahrenheit. Those are pretty high numbers and would be very hot Celsius. Anyway, uh, <laughs> an aside there. Put that in a side tag. Uh, we can go ahead and scroll through each one of these. And if you'll notice, the the text in front, this this temperature here in Fahrenheit, is actually scrolling at a different rate than the picture, and it creates a little bit of a, a depth effect or some nice parallax here. So the text is actually scrolling at a different rate. What did you, what did you call that before the show? Parallaxing. Parallaxing. That's when two people relax. That's right. At the same time. In parallel. So there is a nice parallaxing effect here uh, on uh, on the slider and on the, the trio show. <laughs> and here Chris gives the HTML. So there's a bunch of divs here. Of course, you could go ahead and use sections and articles, which he suggests. And then inside each one of these divs is a span that contains the temperature. And the layout looks something like this. There's a visual container, and then there's the sliding container, and then there's the, there's the panel called slide. So there's three of those. And then it gives the CSS, which is pretty simple, setting a, a fixed width and height for each one of these. Of course, you could, use, uh, you could use other measurements here. Chris also suggests that. And then we have a holder here, and it's 300% wide, and that's part of the magic of this scroller here because you're containing three elements, right? So you want it to be 300%. Anyway, the article goes on and basically explains how this can be done with a lot more CSS and a little bit of JavaScript to do the, the background sliding. And then as a nice touch, Chris also adds, I think, a gradient here. Yeah, there it is. So he adds a gradient on top of the picture here, and basically it creates a little shadow towards the bottom of the image, and that allows for that white text to show up. So basically, it's just a really nice slider, and and Chris gives all the explanation that you need to go ahead and build it yourself. 
Oh, I realize he was calling out the text now. I thought that was a fashion statement about the man's cargo shorts. Nope. Actually, just about the text there. Next up, we have a project called Clippy.js. And Nick, I think I speak for everyone when I say that we all miss the 90s. Um, but one of the best parts about the 90s, uh, besides certain musical songs that uh, we're not going to go into, was Clippy from Microsoft Word. Almost as good as Microsoft Bob. Right. Now, um, Clippy.js is Clippy on the web. Whoa. Oh, I see you're trying to make a web page. Let me help you with that. He's back. Yeah, he's back. And actually, so are some of his friends. Now, this is absolutely wonderful because you can even perform different actions with Clippy.js. See that alert? He just put some headphones on and he's chilling. You can hide him if you want to. Oh, see you, Clippy. Whatever. All right, no, you just stay there. Go, it goes pretty fast. Um, anyway, Clippy.js. Not really much to go into there, but this is a fun little project that you can surprise your viewers with. Maybe, maybe for April Fool's Day, maybe turn on the 90s mode. I don't know. I'm not here to make that decision for you. <laughs> well, that's it for this week's episode of The Treehouse Show. I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. For show notes and more, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. You can also check us out in iTunes. Search for The Treehouse Show. And please rate us if you like this podcast. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about iOS, Android, web development, web design, business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.